the days doing this, people saying we can go out again, and obviously that's what we want, we want some kind of normality, but we talked earlier in the year, will things ever go back to normal? Well, normal, no, they won't, because I think also for a lot of people, the normal that was, was just not working, I mean, what, you know, what are we doing? We know on a personal level, everything's become materialistic, and maybe now these two planets, as they come together now, Saturn and Jupiter, um, Saturn moved back into Capricorn, and it's now coming to the end of that, and in mid-December, it will connect with Jupiter in Aquarius. So that, again, brings this completely different energy, and a lot of astrologers are saying this could be the real dawning of the age of Aquarius. I mean, we're never quite sure exactly when that age started, because these ages are like over 2,000 years each. So, but I, I can see that, that it brings a different energy, and it will start to show a different way of being, and people will think differently. And um, I think for next year, with having Jupiter in Aquarius, that does bring hope to people, because it is very much about humanity and hopefully caring for other people. But Saturn in Aquarius, unfortunately, has this still side of kind of control. So I think you know, we're going to be fighting that for quite a long time as, as the time goes on. But I think for most people, what we thought we have to do is to be authentic, stay centered, stay with who we are, help them and become, you know, kindness and compassion is something I think is so interesting, the two sides of all of this planetary activity, but we've seen really the worst of the worst in people this year and the best of the best, haven't we? We've seen a complete um, contrast there, that some people have been so kind and some people have just been horrible. And it's brought up a lot of stuff for a lot of people. So we have had a lot of planet, other planetary action and we're not done yet. Um, the planet Mars, uh, which is the planet of action and activity, has been in Aries, its own sign, for quite a few months now. And it went into what we call the retrograde phase, for two months, where the planets appear to move backwards, but now it's just gone out of that, and um, you've possibly heard of Mercury retrograde, that's often written about in magazines, and people are like, oh, you can't do anything on a Mercury retrograde, and things go wrong, computers, and post, and travel, but Mars, is it's an interesting one, it doesn't go retrograde as often, um, and to be in its own sign, I think it caused a lot for a lot of people lots of frustration and lots of difficulties. And now with this surge forward, um, it's interesting to see individually how people are kind of coping with what's going on. I mean, obviously, this is the collective we've been talking about. And, and for each individual, whatever's in your own birth chart, you know, you would be looking, how is this affecting me? And obviously, on a personal level. Capricorns have been, you know, have had all of this planetary activity in their signs. So you might, I don't know if everybody here is Capricorn or you know Capricorn, but Capricorn people, but there has, it's probably been a lot um, more heavy duty for those. And also the other Aries um, and, and Libra and Cancer are also those, those three signs because they're all linked together, may have had, you know, through the aspects in astrology, the planets, they might have had a tougher time this year. But I think in the end, we, we all want to think, well, what have I learned from this? What, um, you know, it's a time for reflection. And we just had the new moon in uh, Scorpio um, on Sunday. And this is kind of a time, I think, of reflection, of looking. And we can all do that. You know, what have I learned this year? What's, what's gone wrong? What's actually got better? I think for a lot of people, and to me, this is one of the things that's been amazing, but... You know, we're not allowed to meet people, but this has allowed us to meet on a completely different level. This is Jupiter saying, well, actually, you can meet with everybody in the whole world now, because here you are on Zoom. You know, excuse me. I've been on a lot of conference calls with people from all over the world, Japan and America and holistic things, and it's just been wonderful, this kind of connection. Of course, seeing people in, you know, in real time is better, but... This is actually amazing. And of course, Zoom and computers and technology is all very Aquarian. And I think we will see more of that next year as those planets move through Aquarius and technology will, will become even more. I mean, you know, there is that side that we think, well, we don't want this all the time. It almost feels as if we're being pushed to just be at home on our laptops, do everything from our laptops, see everybody there. And obviously, we don't really want that. So I think there still would be quite a fight about that, you know do need human connection. It's vital, especially well, for all of us, really. There's no one who's excluded from that. So I think 
important to take the time now to, to look at you know how we can connect, what we can do, and certainly I think yoga, meditation, all of these things have become so important for people so that they can settle down and tune into themselves and really connect with their authentic self. You know, and, and as we look, we've got a few more um, full moons. Uh, new moons, eclipses, and all sorts coming up. And yes, some astrologers look at these and think, oh, there's trouble, more trouble ahead. But I think we can also look at them as um, real kind of times to be to gather information. We've got um, a Gemini full moon coming up on, on the, at the end of this month, on the 30th, and it's also an eclipse. And I think Gemini's, obviously, um, the moon is in Gemini, the sun is in Sagittarius, so, uh, is in the opposite sign of the full moon. And those two signs are totally concerned with communication, thinking, understanding. So I think that is a good time. I think Gemini is connect to everything, listen to everything. And actually Sagittarius is saying, no, don't listen to everything. Be very selective with what you listen to. Don't, hopefully none of us have listened to news and stuff like that anymore. Gave up on that months ago, mainstream news. And, you know, find out for yourself, understand, and pass that message on to other people. You know, I mean, everyone's got a lot of opinions also, as we've noticed, about what they know about this and what this and this. But to me, it's about understanding. Does that feel right to you? Have you checked it out, whatever it is? You know, And if you feel that you've got some... Some, something that you can help or educate someone with or, or plant a seed in someone to think for themselves and not just listen to the mainstream. I think that is really important. You know, we've become so reliant on experts to tell us everything. You know, doctors, scientists, they know everything better. Well, we know actually in our hearts that they don't. And we know best. We know best for our bodies. And I think these eclipses that are coming up and the full moons and so on, um, and then in December on the 14th, we've got a Sagittarius new moon, which is a total eclipse. And that, again, is this kind of, you know, go within, examine, find out how you really feel about these things. Um, what is your truth? I think that's really important. You know, don't, it doesn't matter what other people say, what's your truth? And I think these will help us to kind of um, understand more about what's going on. Um, yeah, so I've mentioned the... Uh, the Scorpio moon that we just had. Um, I don't know if any, you know, we can have a chat about that in a minute when I finish, but I think a lot of people said they felt it was very deep. Well, Scorpio is, of course, a very deep sign. It's very emotional, um, and that, I think, for a lot of people, that may be brought up things, um, maybe fear, worry, what's happened, how, what's going to happen next year, what you know, there's a lot, as we know, there's a lot of fear around. And um, it's quite hard sometimes, even if you're not listening to the news and everything else, to not you know, feel that. And if we're quite sensitive, we will pick that up. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think in, like in supermarkets, there's this horrible sense of, not everywhere, but mostly of fear. Nobody looks at anybody anymore. They're all behind their masks. They're all scurrying around. And, and you can feel how fearful some people are. So I think those of us who aren't fearful, you know, and just think, you know, we've got to do our best and be, be who we are and see who we can help. So it's really important. Um, the Scorpio also brings up questions of what you need to keep and what you need to let go. In the astrological world, the wheel, Scorpio is the sign of, is at the time of death in nature. Obviously, everything is dying now um, and going into the underworld, um, preparing, though, for the spring. So it's not, as we say, the end and the death of everything. It's actually the death of what is. So I think for a lot of people, we need to look now at what, what do we actually not need anymore in our lives, whether that's stuff, things, people. You know, there's a lot I think we could do at the moment to see how can I move into this next year, maybe tune into some of that Aquarian energy of liberation and freedom and humanity. But, you know, I don't want anything that drags me back down. You know, so I think it's a really good time to look at that. And obviously, doing your yoga and your meditation is essential for these things. You know, anything else, um, lots of people, I think, this year have started to study other things. I know lots of people who started to 
study herbal medicine and natural health and homeopathy. Nutrition is a big one with some of the groups that I've um, part of up here, we always have a nutritionist and looking at our immune system is, as we know, you know, top of the list that we have to keep that in order and do the best that we can to, to do that, uh, to, to keep ourselves healthy to whatever else is um, coming our way. Um, obviously, I could go on and on about planets forever, but I won't now because there's just one other thing I wanted to share with you. I was saying to Christine that I've been reading a very interesting book about yoga and astrology, and I haven't looked at it before, um, and it concerns the days of the week. Some of you might already know this, um, but each day is named after a planet, so we start with Sunday, which is obviously the sun, and moon day, Monday, is ruled by the moon. Today, Tuesday, is actually ruled by Mars, so that, that's quite interesting. Um, Wednesday is Mercury, so that's all about the mind. And Thursday is ruled by Jupiter. And Friday is ruled by Venus. And Saturday is Saturn. So you know, they, they do, if you look back in, in languages, they all, the French, I mean, today Mardi is Mars, isn't it? I mean, in lots of Latin speaking languages, um, the Mars reference is there. And Mercury D tomorrow, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So it's quite interesting. And kind of looked at, um, what that energy means, and then different different types of yoga that you could actually do on those days. So it's food for thought there. Talking to Christine yesterday, she said that uh, Thursday is never a good day for yoga, which surprised me because I thought, oh, Jupiter, you know. But on one level, Jupiter is always about is is about um, kind of being restless, wanting more, wanting adventure, wanting to understand something else. So maybe people feel they haven't got time for yoga on the Thursday because they're busy doing something else. I don't know. We can see what people think about that afterwards. But um, I'll just run through what I've read. And I will send this out as a little handout for you to have a look because I find it quite interesting. So if you're doing yoga on a Sunday, the, the sun is strong and energetic and stable. It's recommended to, to do hatha yoga and to do lots of mantras. So I don't know. Chrissy might have something to say about this afterwards. Ooh, yeah, can I but, add to that? Um, I know a senior yoga therapist who has a mantra group on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, Chanting. interesting. Yeah. It's just, I thought that, you know, so Monday, the moon day, is obviously the moon is feminine, it's very nurturing, it's peaceful, flexible. So meditation and restorative yoga would be very good on that day. Um, Tuesday, today, so Mars is competent, competitive, athletic. So again, Hatha yoga. And practicing lots of asanas. Asanas, whatever they're called. Christine will know more about that. Awesome. Wednesday, Mercury, adaptable, intellectual. Um, it said in the book, Gayan Yoga. Well, I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's actually uh, the path to knowledge. So that comes at no yeah, surprise okay. on Mercury's day, which mm -hmm. is about the mind and learning and understanding. But um, yes, that Gayan Yoga fine. would be interesting to look at and then pranayama which is breathing i think and then doing different mudras is apparently really important on wednesday so jupiter's day thursday um teaching and meditation so it is actually because of jupiter and the expansion of wisdom and knowledge it would be a good day to learn and understand so that's quite an interesting one to find out why people don't like doing yoga on a thursday and I have to say, I've never been to a class on a Thursday. They're always Monday, Tuesday, or Friday. So, <laughs> interesting. Uh, Friday, Venus Day. So Venus is all about beauty, being creative, being sensuous. Um, and this brings in the tantric yoga and kirtan yoga, mm -hmm. which I'd never heard of. Christine, mm -hmm. yeah. That's chanting. Yes. Like, oh, Singing, chanting. Let's have that in bringing that into your practice how lovely and then on um, Saturday the Saturn day um, it's a responsible mature um, Saturn is all about that so it would be again about bandas that's the putting back I have to explain what that is and karma yoga I don't really know what that is either, but I thought these things are all kind of food for exploration and also just in in the week when you when you're not doing yoga but just think, you know, if you want to be creative, Friday would be a great day to be creative because it's the day of Venus. 
like you've got some work to do or you've got to be energetic, Mars Day would help there and learning. So it's quite interesting to kind of look at those days and I'm sure, you know, we all think, I don't know what we think about the days of the week. I mean, I didn't know there was a connection, um, but, you know, how deep it goes is quite interesting. So um, there we go. So that's some um, all I want to say for today because I'm sure we're very keen to get on and do some stretching. But um, happy to if anyone has any questions or whatever. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, please, anybody, if you've got any questions or whatever you want to, I'm, I will email you out with Christine's notes when she um, sends them. But if you have a particular relevant uh, question that you want to ask or something's caught your attention, then please um, um, do ask. Um, yes, and then we'll do some yoga. <laughs> yeah, yes. Is there anything anybody wanted to ask? I'd just like to say um, that I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I, I know absolutely nothing about astrology. Um, not been ever been, been particularly into it or to my star sign. Um, but yoga is a big thing in my life. So it's it was really just interesting to hear almost that sort of link into into yoga. So I may well want to learn more. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, um, it is obviously um, yoga and astrology are very closely linked, not necessarily in the West, but certainly in, in, yes. in India and so on. I mean, it kind of, they grew up together, I would imagine. Can I say also, Christine, or just to interrupt, um, you've got uh, yoga and Ayurveda, but Ayurveda yeah. has its own Vedic astrology, um, so it's absolutely linked to one of the eight paths of Ayurveda, and astrology is one of them, it's a Vedic astrology. Um, and I um, don't understand astrology as much as I would like to, but I do understand the power and the pull of the moon controlling our tides and the water yeah. element. So I yeah. completely understand that if the moon can be that powerful to control our tides and the water, that it would have quite a significant effect on us. So I, I kind of don't understand all the rest of it, and I wish I, I'd love to learn more, um, but I do understand that significance, and that actually has strong the sun pull is as well. Um, um, yes. But yeah. Um, well, I think all the planets, I mean, science says, oh, it's ridiculous, and it's apart from the sun and the moon, you know, too far away, but we're actually dealing with an energy that's in electromagnetic fields and things like that, we just don't know how it works, you know, the solar flares maybe send out their flares into the um, universe, and then the planetary energy bounces off that, we don't know exactly how it works, but astrology is such an ancient science, I mean, it's, science has been around thousands of years in all different civilizations and you know as you say the um, Indian Ayurvedic and everything is so um, closely linked you know so it is fascinating to look at that and one of the nutritionists on our group she does a lot of working with the moon for health where the moon is the energy the way the body changes at full moon and new moon you know as you're saying it connect, uh, connects the tides so obviously our body being so much water is reacting as well on full moons and new moons. And it's very, very interesting to, to look into that. I know that we don't lose weight, generally, <laughs> as the moon is um, coming to a full moon, and you're a waxing moon, isn't it? And you would lose weight more easily mm -hmm. on a waning moon. <laughs> you retain energy, you retain water as the, wane, as the moon waxes, and you lose, and lose. And there are times of the season where you can plant. Plants do better. Mm -hmm. There are yes. operations that are better, um, yes. uh, apparently, um, at certain times. Because if you're retaining fluid or losing it, that would have a bearing on the outcome of your operation. Um, in you know, again, it's way beyond my understanding. I've got various books on it, but it's just touching the, a very complex subject. So. Yes, yeah. and it's nothing new, it's been practiced forever, you know, and, and I mean, actually biodynamic farming now, growing yes. like the moon, agriculture is becoming oh. more popular. And obviously, as people don't want poisons all over their food, you know, I mean, when we look back in history and think, what, what kind of a civilization were we that eats food that's poisoned, you know, sprayed with all sorts before mm. we eat it? It's true, isn't it? Mm. It's terrible. And we want organic and we want natural and a lot of companies interestingly with wine are growing up wine, um, grapes biodynamically and finding a 
and it does work. They don't know how it works, but it does. Mm. So it stands to reason that our health and everything, you know, is connected. So if I do drink wine, I would get a headache with a wine with lots of additives. Um, I'm not uh, drinking at all, but when you swirl wine around a glass and you just tip it to its side, if the residue is quite significant, you can see it, that indicates a higher level of um, um, additives and they're the ones that can give me massive headaches if I'm not careful. And actually some of the organic wines from really, I mean, if you were into red, which I'm not, I think you know, like places like Argentina and South American wines are fantastic for that, but I just am not, I don't even like red wine, so. I only, drink, I only buy organic wine now. Oh, do you? Mm. Yeah, it's the, is it the... Is it I just don't want pesticides. Who yeah. wants Who wants a load of, as you say, additives on their food or their wine or anything? Yes, yes, um, um, all of that. People are being a lot more conscious of that now. They really wanting on all levels. And we've got such massive change this year. In, well, not only this year, but the whole kind of planetary cycles. I mean... Um, other cycles, which I didn't even mention, but shows that the whole banking system is going to be turned upside down. You know, people are looking for alternative currencies, alternative ways. We've got all this to come still. You know, people are looking at investing on cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. Yeah. This is all internet, you know, Aquarian, and it's very interesting. You know, everything I think will change. We'll have such a big shift over the next years. But we've just got to be sure that we try and keep our part of it positive. You know, but, do what we're here to do. I find it's really important. Yeah. yeah. But it's changing already. Everyone's going online. Like, head's trying to get my mum onto her premium bond <laughs> online. It's like, ah! So, um, yes, yeah, so that's that. So, uh, uh, Br- I mean, any other question? We will get on to yoga as and when. Uh, but does anybody else want to ask anything or get any questions or. No, thank you very much. I will, once Christine sends her notes out, um, I'll um, email them to you. But equally, I mean, um, Christine will hopefully put her contact details. Um, and she runs a Facebook group called um, Restyle Your Life, isn't it? Restyle Your yeah, Life. Yeah, it's got little things about the moon on it, but feel free to, to join it. Um, and I'll put that, uh, and I'll, whatever details she likes to put up, um, and perhaps um, we can uh, persuade her to come again and talk to us. Um, yes, I'm very happy to give you <laughs> she'd like. It's fascinating. Christine also teaches um, astrology. Um, I don't know what courses are going on at the moment at the Mayo Institute in London, is that right? Yes, people want to become a professional astrologer, but I also have private students who are just learning astrology for their own benefit wanting to understand more so um, hopefully again she'll put that up as well and yep. the contact details so if you've got if anybody hasn't got any more questions then um uh, we'll get to yoga um so thank you and if you would like to come to sandy and um I'm very aware that today is uh, Tuesday, so Mardi. <laughs> uh, did you say that connected to Mars? Mars, Mars. I don't know why I was thinking of Jupiter. <laughs> so just come to standing and lift and roll your shoulders and come to a very gentle introduction to just swing from side to side. So this is moving all our energies. Um, the m- Connecting um, astrology a little bit with the body, moon um, connects to the left side of the body, which is the passive side, the feminine side, and the sun connects to the right side of the body. And if you think that the sun is a rising heating energy, and then you like to think that the liver and gallbladder, for instance, are on our right sides, Anger, rising anger, I'm sure Nikki might say something here because Nikki's very into um, Chinese um, uh, medicine. Um, but the liver and gallbladder on the right side connect to the emotion of anger. So on your right side, you've got um, the balancing of the liver and gallbladder, anger and fire element. 
Um, so it's all reflected in our body, and as we know, the um, in yoga you've got not only sun salute, but you've also got um, the moon salute. And we will do a round of sun salute today um, in honour of the Mardi and Mars. And then just come to uh, standing. And then Christine mentioned, um, we've talked about immunity. So there are a number of breathwork exercises, as you know. Um, I'm going to choose the lower lung um, immunity booster. So just join in with me, with me when you're ready. You're breathing in and out through the nose. You can at home do, do it through the mouth, equal amounts. We're going to focus on the lower abdominal area, which cleanses all the energy stale air out. So I'm going to breathe in, breathe out, in, out. Last one. You're feeling your abdominal muscles tighten. The stain layer goes up. The tightening of the abdominal area connects into the um, into your core, which is part of um, a martial arts basis, and this is particularly based on the Kerala warrior uh, tradition. Um, so it strengthens your core. Um, and you'll also, as you exhale, feel it up in your head and the frontal lobes. Just go from side to side to just um, de um, not de-stress from that, but just to equalise your body. There are three breathwork exercises. Each one stands in its own right. That was the lower lung and the abdominal um, area, which, again, I'm sure Nikki will confirm in Chinese medicine, the digestive system very much connects into the whole of the um, health system of our body. And then just lift and sway your hands. We're just going to do a complete, this is Ayurvedic. Um, we mentioned that Ayurveda has eight parts to it. And one of those parts is astrology, the Vedic astrology. This part is part of the medicine side of, um, of Ayurveda, which connects very much into yoga. And this works the entire body. So breathing in will be familiar to some of you. Clasp your hands in reverse. Press your hands up and your feet into the ground. Breathing out, go to one side. Breathing in, come to the centre and breathing out as you go to the other side. So this connects into your lateral side and your intercostal muscles, stretching your lungs. Breathing out, turn to one side, come to the center, and breathing out, turn to the other side, and come to the center. That's rotation. Just lift your heels and feel your abdominal muscles holding you and then breathing out, lower your heels back down to the ground and just separate your hands. You might like to separate your feet as you bend your knees, bottom away. And this again puts your abdominal control on in a form of chair. Breathing in, stand up and then breathing out. Bring your hands to shoulder height and you'll feel the stretch under your arms. So this connects into your lymph system and breathing out, turn and look beyond the third finger of your left hand. If you've gone the other way, it doesn't matter. Breathing into the center and breathing out as you turn your head and look beyond the third finger of your other hand. Come back to the center with your head and then lower your arms back down and set your pose by lifting your shoulders, rolling them back and then resetting them. This opens the energy pathways right the way through to the top of the head. And then from there, just lift and roll again. Clasp the hands behind you and aim your knuckles to the ground. This is opening your lungs, opening your lung, your shoulder area. Breathing out, turn to the left. You might like to lift your hands slightly away from you. Come to the centre and breathing out, turn to the right. And then come to the centre. Release your hands. Slide your hands down 
your legs to the shins, press your hands into your shins and feel the length from your tailbone to the top of the head stretching along your spine. Breathe out, bend your knees and your elbows out. Chin to chest, that's Jalandara Banda and a Banda that Christine mentioned is an energy seal. It boosts energy. Breathing in, press your hands onto your shins, lengthening along the spine again and stay here as you breathe out this time. Breathe in, press your feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And then breathing in, raise your hands up and breathing out, lower your hands. So Christine mentioned bandas, they are energy seals within the body. There are several, but the three main ones are a mula um, uh, banda at the base of the perineum, um, Uddiyana banda, which is around your abdominal area, and then um, Someone tried to call you. Oh. And then um, um, Jalandhara Banda, so that's the chin. And as we came down, chin to chest, the, um, act, that naturally activates the Jalandhara Banda, and that um, activates the vagus nerve, which is very key in anti-inflammation. So um, uh, particularly relevant on a Tuesday, Mars, you want to quell um, rising anger energy that balances that energy. So just lift and roll your shoulders again and then just sway from side to side. And we're going to do the same practice, but it actually now just ticks into Qigong, which is a Chinese breathwork system. And you'll notice the similarities, but subtly different. Thank you for doing that, because I would have completely flummoxed if that had happened. And then just come to the um, stand still, lift and roll your shoulders. So this, as you raise your hands up, clasp and reverse, is very similar to start with. Breathing out, go to the side. Inhale, come to the centre. And breathing out, going to the other side. Come to the centre. Breathing out, turn to one side. Your rotation balances along your muscles along your spine. Come to the centre. And breathing out, go to the other side. Your body needs to go, or your back needs to go, through a number of movements for optimal health, and we're doing that here. And then lower your hands, step your feet slightly apart, and bend your knees as little or as much as you are able to. Breathing out, turn over your left foot. So you choose how far you come down. Breathing into the centre and breathing out as you turn to um, over your right foot and you're stretching along um, your lower back to your ribs, it's the um, quadratus lumborum muscle, which I'm not good at muscles, but that's just what I know. And then press your feet into the ground as you hold the back of your calves and just, again, bend your elbows, chin to chest, you're activating your baby step, Jalandara Banda. Press your feet into the ground as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And just place your hands below your navel, which is your dantian, your Sahara in yoga, just connecting to your um, central core energy. And then raising your hands up as we just bend the knees. So here you're moving all your joints, your ankles, your knees, your hips are moving, your all your ribs and your sternum is lifting up and down, your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists. And if you open your fingers, you're connecting energy through. Your fingers connect through to the heart energy. Um, so, um, again, just a very, that would be a Friday energy. That would be um, um, love and Venus. And then just release back down. Now then, Christine ma mentioned the magnetic field, so this connects into the magnetic field. As you breathe in, lift your hands up and over your head, releasing. So this is breaking or the connection between you, your magnetic field, and the outside world. So if you're a very sensitive person and um, get headaches and tune into other people's energies a lot, 
lights bother you, then this is a very brilliant one to soothe and break that connection. And then just release, lift and roll your shoulders. Sorry? Oh, okay. And, and then we're going to um, connect very much into Mars for today as we do salute to the sun. So come to the top of your mat, feet hip width apart, inhale, exhale, come hands together at the heart centre. Breathing in, hands up, you either look up or look forward, depending on your neck capacity. Breathing out, bend your knees, lower back down to the ground, hands either side of your feet. Inhale, step or slide your right foot back, stretch your right leg, and then bring your right knee to the ground. Slide your left foot back, so that you're kneeling in cat. Dipping your back, either look up or along the ground in cat. Breathing out, round your back, the chin to the chest. Again, your Janandara Bandha, claim your mild energy. And then tuck your toes, feel that you can move your hands, your feet, as you come into a soft downward dog. Move your bottom away from your hands and then extend your legs. Feel you can adjust your feet wider apart. And bend one knee and then the other knee as you walk the dog. You can sway your hips from side to side. And then bend both knees as you come back down to the ground. Your hands go to the left and your foot, right foot, has space now to come up. To the front of the mat, hands either side of your right foot. Just enjoy stretching along your spine and then tucking your back left toes as you lift your back left knee and step your left foot to your right foot. Press your feet into the ground as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing, raising your arms above, your thumbs stretch towards you, your little fingers away and breathing out low and your hands back down right alongside. Inhale, exhale, hands together at the heart. Breathing in, hands up, look up or look ahead. Breathing out, roll down. Hands down the side of your feet. Step or slide your left foot back. And then lower your left knee to the ground. Right foot steps or slides back, so as a drawing cat. Dip your back, looking up or along the ground. Breathing out, round your back. Chin comes to chest and you tuck your toes. As you come into a soft dog, keeping your knees bent, and then begin to extend your legs. Feel you can move your feet, your knees um, can be bent still, and you don't have to have your heels onto the ground. You can walk the dog, swaying from side to side as you bend one knee and then the other knee. And then bend both knees back down to the ground as you move your hands, this time to the right, space for your left foot to come up. Bringing your hands either side of your left foot, tuck your back, left, right toes underneath, lift your right knee, and step your right foot to your left foot, pressing your feet down as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing, stretching up, breathing out, lower your hands. So the next round is going to be slightly quicker. Inhale, exhale, hands together at the heart. Breathing in, both hands up, looking up or back. Breathing out, round down. Hands on the side, your feet, right foot back, stretch right knee on the ground, left foot back, you're in cat. Dip your back, looking up, breathing out, round chin to chest, tuck your toes. Coming into downward dog, just stay here for a moment, walking the dog, swaying your hips from side to side, and then bend both knees as both knees come back down to the ground. Hands to the left, foot, right foot up. Hands either side of your right foot, tuck your left toes. Left foot to right foot. Press both feet down as you roll up vertebra by vertebra, stretching up, stretching your fingers, breathing out, hands down. Inhale, exhale, hands together at the heart centre, breathing in, hands up. Roll down, hands down the side of the left foot. Step back to your left foot, stretching it, left knee on the ground. Right foot goes back to your cap. Breathing in, dip your back. Breathing out, round chin to chest, tuck your toes, coming into a soft downward dog, walk your dog a couple of times. And then bend both knees back down to the earth, hands go to the right, left foot comes up, hands either side of your left foot, tuck your right toes. And then step your right foot to your left foot, press your feet into the ground as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing, stretch up, 
Breathe out. Lower your hands, lift and roll your shoulders. And then balancing the um, left and right brain hemispheres as you turn your head to one side, come through the centre and to the right side. So breathing into the left, breathing out as you bring your head through to the right, breathing into the left, breathing out to the right, breathing into the left and breathing out to the right and then bring your head back to centre lift and roll your shoulders and then breathing in raise your arms clasp or just link your thumbs together and just sway from side to side so this comes back to ayurveda again and it's um, a particular sequence called swaying palm tree for vata the vata element um, which is um, one of the doshas um, it links to your constitutional type and vata is always anti-pain um, among other things so this is very good for freeing off any tension any niggles that you might have and then just very very gently come to the center and then lower your hands back down to your side lift and roll your shoulders and just place your hands on your waist so now you're opening up under your arms you're giving space for your lungs. You just connect your breath. Just press your big toes down and then press your little toes down and then just let the other toes connect to the ground. So you're really stabilizing your posture. Feel that you are e balanced equally. So you can try just slightly coming forward, slightly centered to coming back, slightly to one side center and slide to the other side just to see how you're balanced if you look in the mirror um, at any point you think you're standing up straight but actually you could be standing to the side or coming forward um, so just um, uh, be aware of where you're standing and i can see that nikki's on my side so she might be able to tell me if i'm standing up straight <laughs> or not and then breathing in i was just um, thinking about that earlier <laughs> oh, well, as a typical yoga teacher, <laughs> hands up, bending your knees, hands down. So Christine mentioned magnetic field, and this exercise, as we repeat this a few times, hands up, bending your knees. You don't have to touch the ground, you can touch your shins if you don't really want to come down that far, but touch the floor if you can. So this is cleansing your magnetic aura your magnetic field is uh, going into the aura and in a uh, again called kundalini yoga i did one of the kundalini classes the other day this um is these are called miracle bends so you really are um resetting and refocusing your magnetic field for you you'll find in the traditional kundalini that um they do this very quickly at a dizzyingly fast speed for about 21 times. Um, so I'm not going to suggest that, but I am going to suggest uh, if you want to go at your own pace and speed up and warm up, uh, please do. But I'm taking a very um, glacial speed just to make sure that none of you injure yourselves. But if you suddenly want to speed up and go like a dynamo, as Nikki's doing beautifully in the background, be nice. you, can, <laughs> you wish you could see her, she's whizzing up and down, then um, you're very, very uh, welcome to do so. So the magnetic field, I'm sure Christine could probably talk to you a little bit more about, it's very connected into um, uh, parts of us that we don't really recognise. It's like when it's there, it's that when you, your hand touches a, a door and there's an electric shock, you know, there, we are electricity, there's electricity or vitality. I think doctors, um, ancient you know, old doctors in times gone by would try and fill up a body with energy to see or electricity when it first became invented to see if you could revitalize uh, a body but that electricity is uh, part of our vivacity our aliveness and then coming up for last time Connected to Mars energy then <laughs> yes connected to Mars energy uh, and then just um, coming to stillness and then coming to lying on the mat um, 
We will do some foot exercises, but the purpose at this particular point in this yoga sequence is to rebalance our energy. So when you've moved a little bit, in order to derive maximum benefit, um, you'll have various little pauses put in. And this is just one of those little pauses. So coming to reset your pose, lying on the ground, stretching out, it's almost like a shavasana, but actually perhaps just have your palms down. Extend your left foot with your heel extended and your toes up and then relax. And then extend your right heel. So you're balancing your pelvis. Again, your left heel and then balancing your right heel. And now just turn your head from side to side, just making sure that you're balanced on the back of your head. And in fact, you're accessing active you're accessing some acupressure points on the back of your skull here. Come to have your head to the centre and circle your ankles a few times in one direction. It really doesn't matter which way you go because we're going to be in a moment reversing our ankles and going in the other direction. So the ankles and the feet connect into reflexology and again we're just touching on um, part of our, our energy um, in Chinese medicine, it's the meridians. The Chinese believe that moving the feet boosts your immune energy system because you've got the lungs as you stretch your feet out connecting at the base of your toes. So stretch your feet out and then just relax them. And then bend one foot and then the other knee rather and one the other knee so that you've got knees up to the ceiling and feet on the ground. And sometimes it's nice to press your feet down, lift your bottom and just resettle your pose. Just place your hands on your abdomen and have your elbows slightly out to the side. Have your feet maybe slightly wider than the hip width apart. And then just gently sway your knees from side to side. And you'll find that your hands travel over your navel area. There are acupressure points linking to the major organs where you're under your hands. So you're giving your body a gentle massage. Your knees, as they go from side to side, you choose how much you move your knees, a lot or a little bit, and you lift your hips off the floor. You can begin to involve your head. So as your knees go in one direction, your head turns away from your knees and you slightly lift off your hips. So now we come into uh, something called the somatic movement, which explores anti-aging. Because as we age, sadly, our muscles slightly don't get the full usage and they can settle into a um, uh, uh, position and also contract slightly. So this movement starts to explore both the hip and the shoulder joint. As you go from side to side, you're massaging across your navel and you're just moving your neck gently. Your neck rebalances part of your endocrine system, but also your neck links between your body and your head. It links um, your emotions. So um, we can often, if our body does one thing, uh, our mind wants to do something else, it can show up in the neck. So it's speaking your truth and we're just exploring that as well. And then just come to the centre, adjust your feet if you'd like to, and hug your left knee into your chest and keep your right foot where it is. And this again connects into Ayurveda and the um, uh, Vata element. Um, so this particular pose is a variation of Apanasana, the lower energy, but this connects into pain relief. And then still holding your left knee into your chest, place your left ankle on top of your right leg and open your left knee out to the side. Just place your hands on your abdomen as you sway your knees from side to side. You can lift your hip off the ground. Now you can stay with your hands on your abdomen or you can raise your arms up above you and just hold your wrists as you sway from side to side. You feel the pull under your arms. So our lymph system, um, or our, our lymph um, connects into our immune system and our upper um, lymph um, energetic pathways are under our arms. So stretching out under the arms is a very good way to give energy to um, the upper lymph system. 
and then lowering your hands to hug your left knee into the chest once more and then just supporting the left leg perhaps holding underneath the thigh to place the left foot back down onto the ground hands onto the abdomen as you just rock your knees from side to side and then bring your attention to your right knee as you pick your right foot up and hug your right knee into your chest. Just enjoy that apanasana. Apana is the energy and asana is the Sanskrit name for a yoga pose, so it's apanasana. And then just very, very gently supporting the right knee as you place your right ankle on top of your left leg. As before, you can just rock from side to side. Your hands can be on your abdomen. And then it's optional if you want to raise your arms up above you, just stretching out under your arms. Just check that your chin is um, not sticking up to the ceiling, so the back of the neck is long. And this, again, creates um, a line um, for your blood to flow all the way along from the base of the spine to the top, through the neck to the head. There's no creasing of the spine or the neck area here. And then very, very gently come to support your right leg under the thigh. Maybe you'll just hug your right knee into or to your chest. And supporting your right leg as you place your right foot onto the floor. Now this time place your hands, palms down alongside you. Feel free to adjust your feet. They're going to be back hip width apart. And start just a gentle pelvic tilt. So that's flattening your back to the ground as you go to almost lift your bottom, but you're not. And then just releasing so that there's a little gap under your lower back. And that's just, again, working on that lower spine level, um, specifically around um, the L4, L5 lumbar vertebra and the top of the sacrum which um, is the area that gets all the wear and tear in our spine, typically because it's the point where we move and bend from. So you can stay like this, or if you'd like to take it a stage further, as you press your feet into the ground, flattening your back, you can carry on and actually lift your bottom up from the ground. Press your feet down, chin goes into your chest, and optionally raise your arms up above you so that you come into a, what I call a rolling bridge, breathing out, lowering your bottom to the ground and lowering your hands and then just when you've recovered you can do that again by flattening your back pressing your feet into the ground you can engage your perineum upwards if you want to just engaging the muladhara banda and you naturally bring your tummy in towards your spine that's your the other banda your third banda is chin to chest so you're engaging all three energy bandas which gives a massive energy boost and strength to the whole body very um Connecting into um, Tuesday, Mars energy, breathing out, lowering everything back down to the ground. You start with breath and then move and then finish your breath. And then hug your knees into your chest. Just rock from side to side. And then slide your hands down your shins. You might find that your thumbs come inside and just hold your ankles so that your big toes are vaguely aimed towards each other. It's like a supine Vadakonasana or a supine cobbler's pose. And now you're opening the inner groin and that's the lower lymph um, energy points. So again, you're boosting your immune system at the lower energy. And you can stay static here or to make this pose dynamic, you can just slightly rock from side to side to your choice. And you're rocking from side to side, massages across your lower, um, or your upper sacral area. And then you can stay here. Or you can, um, exceptionally, if you've got this um, within your grasp to hold your big toes, if not, just hold your ankles, and extend your feet upwards in a V, your inner goddess, and just again rock from side to side. If that's too much for you, then just hold your um, shins. Don't feel that you have to hold your big toes. A lot of it is your arm length, and I've got long arms, so I find this very easy, but not everybody does. And just again, enjoy the stretch along the inner 
um, part of the leg. If you extend your toes and extend your heels, that again, you'll feel that on the inside seam of your leg. And then bend your knees, and if happy baby is accessible to you, hold under your soles of your feet. If it's not accessible to you, then just hold your shins. And again, this opens your hips in a slightly different way, so you can just rock from side to side. If that's not good for you to hold your legs, just hold your shins and rock from side to side. Check that your chin is not shooting up to the ceiling. And then just bend in, hug your knees into the chest once more and rock from side to side. And then still holding your knees, as you breathe in, holding your knees, let your knees move away from you to arm's length. And breathing out, hug your knees into your chest. Breathing in, let your arms move away to arm's length. Hands move away to arm flex, you're holding your knees and breathing out, hug your knees into your chest. And again, repeat this a couple of times in your own breath work, using your own breathing pattern. And you'll feel that you're just massaging along that L4, L5 area here, just pulsing your lower back, activating the bloodstream. You're also pulsing your tummy or your abdominal area. You can still engage your perineum here and bring your lower abdomen towards your chest, but you tend to do that naturally here anyway. And you're toning up your digestive system. By engaging the perineum, you're beginning to tone up um, the internal um, organs, abdominal organs as well, so it becomes a more complete exercise. And then just very gently supporting your thighs underneath as you bring one foot and then the other foot back down to the ground. Knees are up towards the ceiling. And again, you might just like to sway your knees from side to side. For people who are very compromised with lower back issues, this is one of the first um, rotational movements that you would do. And rotation is very important to balance the muscles along the spine. So all rotations um, are uh, aligning for the spinal area, but also rotation is good for the digestive system as well. And then coming with your knees to the centre, you can either hug your knees into your chest and rock up, they're going to come to high kneeling, or you can roll to the side, to your right, and then take your time to gradually come up. There is really no hurry, and you're going to come up to a high kneeling position. But as I said, really please do take your time. If your knees are a little bit stiff, then have a jumper or roll your mat up um, underneath. Have your knees hip width apart. Slide your hands to your knees, and then meet what I call kneel up. Raising your hands up by either looking ahead or looking up. Up your neck capacity, stretch your fingers and breathing out round your back, chin to chest, go down, 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 there. Hands on the ground and slide your hands away from you until your elbows are on the ground and then your bottom's up in the air. Wipe the dog, wipe your tail by just moving your bottom from side to side. So this moves the abdominal area. And then come to the centre as you slide your hands towards your um, legs, slide them up for support. You're stretching, you're lifting here at the chest, which is uplifting for the mood. And raise your hands up, looking ahead or up. It's more difficult to balance when you look up. And then breathing out, rounding chin to chest, you're activating your vagus nerve, so it's calming for the nervous system. Slide your hands along the ground, elbows on the ground. Bottom up. You can wag the dog, wag the tail, or you can just come forward and just rest your um, crown slightly on the ground, activating the crown energy. Up to you. And then sliding your hands back, supporting you. Up your legs. Again, stretching your arms up, stretching your fingers. And then again, rounding chin to chest. Sliding your hands along, and you choose whether you want to rest on your elbows with your bottom up, static, whether you want to move your bottom from side to side, 
or whether you want to carry on and just bring your crown to touch the ground. And then sliding your hands back to your legs, to your knees, your thighs, come to, come to the side and come to sit in a comfortable cross-legged position. And Christine mentioned Gyana Yoga and Gyana uh, Mudra. Um, so Gyana is a mudra, but it connects into the mind. It's one of the very, um, you'll see Buddhas doing Gyana Mudra. It's the thumb and the second finger. Um, the thumb, the second finger goes inside the thumb. And Gyana Mudra, there are two of them. One with the hands up on your knees. That's the gesture of um, consciousness. So you're receiving energy from, you know, letting your mind free and you're getting energy coming in. The other Gyana Mudra is of the mind is palms down, which is gesture of, con of knowledge. So I tend to like hands down, not for any knowledge, but just that it supports my spine. So that's just me. So just choose what's comfortable to you for you. So it connects into the mind and ethereal things and uh, coming back to Gyana Mudra. So breathing in, turn your head to the left as little or as much as you would like. Breathing out, turn your head to the right. So this becomes a breathwork exercise. It's in to the left, out to the right. Check that your shoulders are not up, they're away from your ears. In to the left, out to the right. And just carry on a couple of times, in to the left and out to the right. So this is balancing, talking about Gyana Mudra, this is balancing the mind. It's balancing the left and the right brain hemispheres, or the right and the left. So Christine has mentioned again the water element, and we've talked about um, the moon, the tides, or I did, Christine didn't, <laughs> um, on the tide bit, but the, the, it's connecting in, of, we've got water elements, so as we turn from left to right, we're balancing the hemispheres of the brain, we're um, um, enhancing the neural pathways, it also becomes a mindfulness exercise because it's hard to be stressed while you're turning your head from side to side. You can't retain thoughts. And it becomes a breathwork exercise as you breathe in to the left, breathe out to the right. And you move, I'm moving quite slowly. You can move more quickly, but slow is good. And then finally, come back to the center of your head just slightly drop your chin to your chest and take this moment to have a thought for the day. It could be for you or for anybody. Your Sankalpa is what the Sanskrit name for it. And so you wish somebody, you or somebody else well, and mentally think that a couple of times to emphasize the thought process or to make sure that the intention is set. And with your chin slightly to your chest, choose a colour, any colour that you reckon, um, identify with today. And just imagine wrapping yourself. We talked about the magnetic field, so wrap yourself, your aura, um, in your colour of choice inside and out. And imagine only um, positive energy can be there. All negative things can disappear. Only positive energy is allowed in. All negative can, can go. And just seal your intention and your energy, your protection for the day in for yourself. As you then, if you haven't already got your chin to your chest, bring your hands to your heart. Um, have a lovely day ahead and thank you everyone for joining.